Tunisia, 3,000 years of glorious civilizations. Situated in North Africa, surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea to the north and east, my beautiful Tunisia holds the northernmost point of the African continent, Cap Angela. But before digging deeper into the treasures of my country, I would like to introduce myself. Here Nade, reporting to you from Tunis, the capital city of Tunisia, located in the northeast coast. Pronounced Tunis, it's a Berber native name, Tunis. And if you have never been in Tunis, allow me to take you on a city tour. And I can promise you that at the end of this video, you will see it differently. In Tunis, the climate is mild and bewitching, summer and winter. Average temperatures are between 11 degrees Celsius in winter and 26 degrees Celsius in summer. The city of Tunis has nearly 900,000 inhabitants, with Islam as their religion. Tunis welcomes every year 1 million tourists who come from all over the world to spend pleasant moments and enjoy a special civilization world. I chose to start by highlighting the historical aspect of my city, starting from a glimpse of civilizations to the architecture. Carthago, or Carthage, an ancient treasure from the Roman civilization. Melk ibn Anas Mosque is located in a place called La Cunine de l'Odéon, on a site covering an area of 3 hectares in the heart of the archaeological site of Carthage. The entrance hall is inspired by the decor of the old residences of notable city dwellers, with its ceramic panels featuring Andalusian inspired floral models. Basilica of the Musicarita is one of the most famous Christian basilicas in Carthage. It is formed of nine naves and presents a confusing plan. The latest excavations have shown that it was a memorial of the Byzantine period, that is to say, a building built to recall the memory of one or more martyrs. Its southwest apse was decorated with a floor mosaic with brightly colored flowers, which today has completely disappeared. Near the remains of this basilica, one can observe a partly underground circular monument that some archaeologists believe was intended to honor the martyrs. San Luis Cathedral is built from 1884 to 1890 and decommissioned from worship in 1963. It has been known since 1993 as the Upper Polling of Carthage, a cultural and festive place that hosts shows and exhibitions. Regarding the chapel, the architect's choice is that of a building of modest proportions with an architecture that combines Gothic and Byzantine styles. The facade exhibits a rose window carved in a notcher cut stone and is framed at each corner by two square towers. Near the San Luis Cathedral, we find shops of mosaic artwork and sculptures of famous figures that shaped the Roman civilization. Since ancient times, Traces of mosaics were found in Tunisia. The Carthaginian period left many of them illustrating period portraits. Mosaics also retraced passages from daily life of the time. Today, the mosaic is a symbol of a Tunisian culture which is endlessly available. Current mosaics are more modern and above all, more accessible, at different prices. It is a profession that is passed down from father to son. The mosaics are available through various other objects, whether tables, paintings, and benches. They are so popular that they are exported internationally for customers in the United States and Canada. After making a quick tour in Carthage, I'm taking you to discover another place in my city, Sidi Bousraid. Sidi Bousraid is a town attached to the Carthage site and located about 20 kilometers from Tunis. Presents a former family house of the Tunisian bourgeoisie. From the 17th century, the charm of Sidi Bousraid attracted a lot of bourgeoisie in Tunis, who built luxurious mansions. Then, in the 20th century, it was the artists who fell under the spell of Sidi Bousraid. The village then welcomed famous writers such as Flaubert, Colette, and Simone de Beauvoir. Sidi Bousaid is the first protected site in the world and a tourist hotspot with a Mediterranean 
white and blue have become the official colors of the village, which is today nicknamed as the White Blue Paradise. Walk with me through its steep and winding streets and admire its white lime clad houses in the typical Arab and Delosian style. Admire with me every heavy studded doors that open into secret gardens lined with ceramic and flowered with geranium. And for years, after immediately having admired the steps of the door, it only takes a few steps to find yourself in front of the stall blessed by the gods. A little small room in which, from father to son, we continue to make these delicious nut donuts. Called Bambaluni, a good crispy donut with its powdered sugar and its subtle perfume. It is a bit like the Madeleine of Proust, but to the USA style. Now it trades at 800 millis, which equals 0 0.29 dollars. But beyond the origins of Bambaluni of Sidi Bousaid, these donuts are in reality Italian, and it is the Jews that brought them to Tunisia. The Margoum, a weaving of wool used as a carpet of ground whose origins are Arab Berber. The artisanal production of Margoum is a combination of the art of traditional weaving and drawing on wool. The craftsman prepares the wool and uses the loo and traditional tools. This craft, like many others, requires a great physical effort. Margoum products are very popular with Tunisians, as well as tourists. This rock offers a very wide choice of models and a multitude of colors, responding to the imagination of the craftsmen who make them head to head. The Margoum is also made in different sizes, from the simple chair mat to the very large living room rug. Now, I present to you another specialty of the Tunisian craft field, ceramic painting. Handmade with impeccable care and expertise, each dish is unique. Tunisian pottery incorporates elements from many styles and cultures, including Arabic, French and Italian. This eclectic combination of culture is beautifully exemplified through each ceramic design. Today, we are discovering the Medina, the heart of Tunis. Our tour starts at Habib Bourguiba Avenue, a lively heart that revives our bustling capital. Our avenue extends over 1500 meters in length and 100 meters in width. It is linked to the main avenues of Tunis. This avenue is not a simple avenue. It is a mirror that reflects our history, our civilization, our modernism and our openness to the world. Walking along the Avenue de France, you first find yourself in front of the cathedral, a symbol of tolerance and freedom of belief in Tunisia. Walking a few steps away from the cathedral, you can see the statue of the famous Ibn Khaldun, a symbol of wisdom and cultural heritage. Leaving Habib Bourguiba Avenue and the colonial district behind you, enter the Medina through the Port de France ou Bebhar. Bebhar is one of the doors of the Medina of Tunis, located to the east of the old enclosure or the Place de la Victoire. It takes the name of Port de France during the French Protectorate, a name that is sometimes given to it today. Introducing to you the famous Medina of Tunis. The 9th century Medina was originally surrounded by walls. Today, the walls are gone. But the area is filled with narrow streets, souks, mosques, and historic structures. The Tunis Medina became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979 and has over 700 monuments dating back to the Almohad and the Hafsi period of Tunisian history. The Medina of Tunis has also been an important religious center since its inception. Thus, the Great Zituna Mosque, located between the souks and the palace, is an architectural and theological reference for many Tunisians. Its minor is visible from the nearby alleys, or from many terraces accessible from the shops. And it is possible, under certain conditions, to visit the mosque. 
The soup in Tunis is like those in many other locals. Narrow passageways and many small shops and covered buildings. There are at least 10 souks. Divided by a corporation, the souks are organized around great mosques, perfumes, wools, fabrics, silversmiths, and shishias. A perfectly regulated chaos for centuries. Souk al Has, or the Copper Souk, is one of the souks of the Medina of Tunis. It specializes in the sales of copper utensils. There are two types of products available. Copper kitchen utensils, which are increasingly scarce due to our competition from manufactured products and the products of the crafts that are intended for tourist consumption and sell in tourist routes. The shishiyas, these red cups, so typically Tunisian, come from the West. It was in the 17th century and Dulcine immigrants who had landed from Spain introduced this craft to Tunis. Over the centuries, the Tunisian capital will export woolen hats over the Middle East and in the Muslim Mediterranean, Turkey, Egypt, so on and so forth. Hey there! If you think that this was all, well, you should think again, because what you just discovered about my city is a glimpse of what my country has to offer to its visitors. So, take a moment with me to think about what you just saw. Pick a date, book a flight, and join me in your next destination, Tunis.